say as a comment, a really short comment that the ground level or the, the groundwater contamination levels right now in waste management area C dramatically exceed the modeled concentration. So when you saw them showing 30 picocuries per liter as the maximum con concentration they were ever going to hit in their model, right now they have levels way, 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 way above that in present day. So that shows you that there's something missing in the model, which is all the contamination that's already there. Yeah. And I think we should be raising that question as one of the core concerns we have. Um, I also just want to say on the trust issue, this latest Federal Register notice is a slap in the face to the state of Oregon, to the state of Washington, and to everyone who has been working through the tri-party agreement and that process for decades. The idea of redefining, reinterpreting high-level waste is it's backwards, um, it's retrograde, um, and has the potential to leave poison next to the Columbia River for thousands of years. And so we ask that you withdraw that. Uh, other folks with comments? Uh, there's one up here in the front row if you want to get up and move around, and then we've got one just in a moment. All right. So pleased to introduce myself. I am I'm a journalist from Switzerland, and um, my question might be a little bit out of the main focus, but I just to let you know briefly that I'm on a, on a program that consists of me going back more than 15 years after on some issues I covered, you know, environmental issues I covered on my TV 15 years ago. So what strikes me in hearing you tonight is that I was there visiting Hanford in 2001, and I was basically hearing more or less, of course, I'm not a specialist, the same concerns, same issues. Uh, tanks were already leaking into the groundwater. Uh, we, you were talking, DOA, about a glass uh, treatment, uh, waste treatment uh, factory. We are in 2018. Uh, I don't see anything. Um, so I'm just wondering, I mean, it seems like, um, I don't want to be rude, I'm sorry, but just we are talking, you are talking. Yeah, there is a lot of talk, yeah, very interesting. You are very, yeah. But <laughs> then from my perspective, you know, the step a bit far, I don't see a lot of changes. I'm sorry about that. Uh, there is only one change. When I was in 2001, I was openly welcomed by the DOA to visit the facility and people would explain me uh, about the situation, frankly, about what was going on and their concern. And I have one paper here. I know you are not you are not the right person, but I just want to just the feeling how rude how rude your people are. I work for the Swiss Public Service. I'm a, I'm a public television, and in Switzerland we are very much I mean interested about Enfold. Enfold is a, like a milestone. It's a symbol worldwide about what's going on. We also have a nuclear waste, a nuclear issues with neighboring friends. So it's it's a very important issue. So when I, I harass, <laughs> finally, your, your press or whatever, you know, about you know, asking for very politely and many phone calls and email, um, this is the answer I get from you. Unfortunately, at this time, we are unable to accommodate this time of access. There is no dear sir, there is no uh, best regards, there is nothing. Nobody signs that. So I think, I mean, you, you people, the public, have to understand what's going on. I mean, access to uh, independent, you know, viewing and, and is completely denied to people like me, foreigners, maybe I'm just too small or whatever, but just to know that they don't even say, dear sir, or they don't even sign. It's just, okay. And I think you should be, I mean, you could be very interested about this kind of, of, uh, of behavior. This is just a... A small thing, but uh, mm -hmm. frankly, I'm I'm around in the world since two, I mean, 30 years on the road, and very, I've been to very places, Iraq or whatever. But you never got that that kind of answer. At least the people say, "Sir" or "Bye bye" or whatever. Best we got. And small thing, but I think, but uh, yeah, that's it. Not a big change in uh, in uh, in, uh, in 18 years. Uh, from what I see from, from a bit far. Good luck to you, because you are living there. Yeah, no kidding. Thank you so much. Did you, 
I mean, I, I'm not sure you're looking yeah. for a response. No, no, it's okay. Uh, of, of, you know, you can answer anyway. <laughs> All right. Thank you for, for coming. Uh, my name is Lonnie Clark, and I am the host of a show called the Age of Vision Radio Show. And uh, on it, I interview activists and anti-nuclear activists and anybody related to nuclear contamination. So I heard you sp speak about the cost. It's almost a billion dollars. Yeah. That sounds like the reason why you want to leave this in the ground, because you don't want to spend more money on it. But I would suggest that we probably need to dig in. I mean, we're spending, we're talking about a space force now where it's gonna cost us trillions and gazillions of dollars going on. So I think if we actually leaned into the problem, spent more money into it instead of being cheap, uh, we could actually find solutions instead of threatening our entire future of the entire planet, because that's what we're talking about. The waste here is not small. It's not just the one, I mean, one drop. We've all been contaminated. I was born in 55. We were the first generation of people to be bombed. And that is what this comes out of. It comes out of the Manhattan, we're still living with the Manhattan Project. And this speaks to your issue here of the secrecy, the disregard, the disrespect. And I personally really believe we need a change of culture. I found an article written that said, that frankly the IAEA had never tested their safety culture model. And all we've done is kick the can down the road. We need to spend trillions of dollars, trillions and trillions more. As a taxpayer, I'm willing to lean into it. So I, I would suggest that we stop looking at the cost of the money and focus on finding a solution. My name is uh, Tom Carpenter, and I'm executive director of Hanford Challenge, and uh, studied Hanford for a few years. Uh, if, if I went to my doctor, and he said, Tom, you've got a cancerous tumor, and it's gonna spread, so we have to operate. And I went home, and I said, oh man, that's terrible news. Then I got a call from my insurance company, and they said, no, no, you have a head cold. <laughs> and uh, that's what you're going to get, two aspirin and stay home and drink plenty of liquids. But that cancer is going to spread and I'm going to die uh, because that's the treatment I'm going to get. And that's what I'm worried about is happening here tonight, is that the Department of Energy is trying to re-diagnose their problem from high-level waste that's going to last for many millions of years. I mean, literally, iodine-129 uh, you know, has the 15 million year half-life. Uh, you saw the figures up on the board, plutonium, 24,000 year half-life, takes 10 half-lives. Uh, and it's not just this sea farm waste. It is waste from other tanks, uh, 177 tanks with waste in them, 56 million gallons. And it may not be 4% next time. It may be 10%, it may be none uh, that they decide, you know, that they reclassify high-level waste into just low-level waste and leave it there. And that makes Hanford a high-level waste repository in all but name, in all but name. And it's not a valid facility for that. It has not been qualified as that. It is in an earthquake-prone zone. It's in a flood zone. It's in a volcano zone. Uh, it has uh, glacial ice age floods every 20,000 years. Uh, this is not a site where you can just leave long-lived products uh, and walk away and, and submit. That's not gonna last but 100 years. I don't care what they say about that. It can fail on the first day. Cement pours fail on the first day all the time. They crack, water gets through. This is really just about saving money. And you really hit the nail on the head. It's like, they talk about a billion dollars, the United States spent nine trillion dollars to make nuclear warheads, right. and you know the cost of the Hanford cleanup is high. It's you know 110, 120, 200 billion. It's nothing compared to what we spent to make these weapons in secrecy. So sorry, we got to clean up this mess. We can't cheap out, uh, and you know so I think it's very important that you know we address this problem head on. Get this waste 
cleaned up out of these tanks, spend the money necessary, uh, and protect the public health and safety, not just now, but far into the future when these waste will be going into the river and into our crops and food and air. Thank you. My name is Joyce Bowenstead, and um, I would like to say, avoid truth decay. <laughs> avoid <laughs> truth decay. When we change the definition of words, we decay truth. Back in 2000, George W. Bush was selected by our Supreme Court to be our president. And at that time, up to that point, I and Paige Knight, Roy Marfette, and others, we were these weirdos that would regularly meet to look at the budgets of Hanford. We had definitions for what was going on. When W got into power, suddenly, all the people that were running Hanford changed, the definitions changed, we couldn't follow the budget anymore because all the words were changing mm. and we were having a decay of truth and what was really going on at Hanford. I say no to any change at a reclassification because you're just hiding, it's another shell game and we all suffer from that. Thank you. trying to, uh, because I wanted to learn what this reclassification was all about. Um, and all I heard from you up there is um, that it hasn't been decided yet. <laughs> I haven't heard why. Uh, we're guessing that it's to save money, but I haven't heard you say that, and I would like to hear what the justification could possibly be as I was walking here, I was thinking, boy, if I get caught out in the woods, my car breaks down, I don't have any water. I guess I could drink whatever I have and call it water, and then everything would be fine, right? My antifreeze wouldn't poison me if I don't call it antifreeze? Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> 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 Try and answer that a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, the department was not has not made a decision because we want to factor in the public, uh, Indian <laughs> nations, uh, the state agencies comments into that decision making process as well as consultation advice from um, an independent expert agency, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. So uh, the department has not made a decision. We're going to consider that information before we make a decision. That is not my question. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know. My question you was not your process. My question was why. Uh, that's why, are you why are you reclassifying? Why are you reclassifying? Right. Yeah. We are making a determination based on risk, based on the criteria. We think it is safe. We are welcome when you're asking for public comment before the department makes a decision. I asked you why, and you keep telling me how. Right. That's a I agree. question. Dan, you think you can find yeah, I, I think that you mentioned the hazard to workers. If you could elaborate on that, I think that's a very real concern for the people that actually have to put on this to see the C packs and go in there and deal with this stuff. So I think that's that's a consideration. We can't hear you. Say, <laughs> I think one of the considerations that I've heard is that the hazard to the workers of, of doing this work. And I think that's a real consideration for our neighbors to the, to the north. Let's just tell them that it's safe, and then it won't be hazardous to them. <laughs> what, what they're saying is, if they don't have to go in and scrape it out with it, or, or, or hit it with a, with a needle gun, I don't know if you're familiar with a needle gun, we yeah, use it in the Navy to remove paint, uh, but you can't send somebody into the tank with a needle gun. You might be able to send a robot in, but uh, the worker, worker hazard is, is a legitimate concern. So you sacrifice uh, 100 people to save 10? 
a thousand years from now? I mean, what's 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 the ratio? Well, why can't you spend money and make a machine that can go in there? I mean, like this is about spending money. It sounds like they don't want to invent the pro like we don't want to send workers in there to be at risk. But why not spend money to invent something to move this? It's obvious it's about they're going to have to spend millions of dollars to create some. Te I mean, they're obviously way over their head in technology. They don't know what they're doing. So we're at risk and being asked to just leave it there, don't worry, because it's not that much. I mean, I think we should take our time, you know, not that it has to be moved immediately if they don't know how to do it. Don't threaten people's lives over it, but deep into it, dig in, spend money. Be real. Stop with the Manhattan Project. Stop the lies. Stop the secrecy. It's, it's, a, it's a complete insan insanity risk to the entire public and to the entire world to leave it on an earthquake zone where if it happens, we're going to have a fire that is not going to get put out. It is an absolute risk. And this hunt, look, even in the even in the in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, where they they put in that dome over the Marshallese, that thing's falling apart. We've washed our hands and told the Marshallese they're good to go. Well, these are things that have never been done before, never been Obviously. taken care of before. It's really important that everybody have a voice in how they get taken care of. But the, 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 the other side of it is that you don't just do nothing and wait. Spend money. How about that? How about instead of kicking the can down the road, refusing to give the workers protective gear, you know, we, no, we just want a case where people, I'm just saying it's, we, it is because they don't want to spend the money to create the projects. So, yeah. sorry. Sorry. Hi, my name is Nicolette O'Connor. I live in Vancouver, Washington. Um, I really appreciated Jeff's presentation. And I, a couple of comments I'm going to make, okay, is you're very fixated on the tanks. And that, that's my concern is the plume and the soil. And why are we reclassifying? It, it is a valid question. And when I listen to Jeff's presentations and Jeff's concerns, I totally get the apple falling off the apple cart. And he made mention of something in 2020, asking you, why will you not wait for this analysis? Why are we moving ahead with a redefinition when it's a slap in the face to people who have been working on this for 15 years? Exactly. And there's no trust. I'm sorry. I, I put my trust in the state of Oregon, and I put my trust in the state of Washington in ecology. I cannot put my trust in the federal government. And once again, I must ask you, what about the soil? You want to cap a tank, but you're not looking at the soil. And as the representative from the Riverkeeper said, you, you've already exceeded the standard that your model said you wouldn't do. So again, what about the soil? And why are we redefining waste when we already know the waste is there? Thank you for your time. Excellent. Thank you. Before this was Hanford, this was the Yakima. The Yakima Nation ceded lands is what they are today, but these, these lands were the Yakima home. The Columbia River is their home, and so I think they do know exactly what they're doing. I think the strategy is in place, and, mm -hmm. and the, the issue about trust that was made is really an important one, Jeff. And thank you, Ken and Jeff, for hosting this, and thank you, panel. But to build trust, you just described a detailed process with documents that are not available to really do a complete evaluation with a goal to be grouty in 2020. 
The NRC report won't be out till late December. Public comment closes November 7th. The CFR, and please take a look at it, it's a key thing, don't get distracted, forget that closing is the first week of December. And if they are able to remove the terminology of not incorporated, that removes one of the criteria. So um, all in all, people are looking at this differently to solve a very big problem. But I just, I just want to uh, advise from the Yakima perspective uh, to step back and look at where the problem is. It's in the ground, it's in the groundwater, it's in the Columbia River from this tank farm. And it's also in the tanks. The heel of the tank is, is uh, welded to the side of the tank. I agree with uh, Jeff's. There's been some excellent efforts in developing technology at Hanford. I believe the cost of the next tank farm will be less because they've learned a lot. And they're gonna learn more. And in 20 years, we're gonna look back at this moment and wonder if we missed the point when we didn't go back and pay attention to what's outside the tanks and use an open process to actually evaluate a solution that's protective of the Yakima people who are the most impacted by lifestyle, the people of Washington, Oregon, and the planet, and, and just look at how much we've learned in the last 30 years that Ken is talking about the quotes at the beginning. We know a lot more than we did. We're gonna know a lot more in 30 years, and it's gonna keep going, so we have to work on solutions and not changing definitions to call all that progress. So anyway, I appreciate you all being here. Yakima, appreciate your participation. Thank you. Hi, I'm Lou Frederick, uh, the state senator from Portland. But I've been covering and looking at Hanford for the last uh, 40 years, uh, since 1978 when I did my first series of stories there. I was also born in Pullman, Washington, so I'm one of the down winners as well. Uh, especially for the, uh, the Green Chain um, episode, uh, which if you don't know about that, I encourage you to look it up. They intentionally released radio activity so that they could find out how far it went when I was a baby. So I have a personal as well as professional concern. I'm also on the, um, um, national, the national state legislatures uh, national uh, social, uh, Councils, no, not Council of State Legislators, on CSL, National Conference of State Legislators, um, Nuclear Waste uh, uh, Task Force. And so I come at this in a, a number of different directions. Let me suggest and let me ask, and let me ask you to write this down. The folks who are talking about this are not hysterical. They are not just deciding that they don't like nuclear waste and this, they've come to this because of some immediate um, hysteria. They've been talking about this and concerned about this for decades. My first story that I did on the plume was in 1985. Wow. Um, and at that time, the Hanford folks were telling me, oh, don't worry about it, it's not that much there. That's not, we, we aren't concerned about that. Uh, so the plume is something that is a concern that's been going on for quite some time. We are, we're talking about the fact that folks uh, are concerned and they do not trust what's being said. If there's one basic issue I think you should be uh, aware of and you should put in your list whenever you talk with whoever you talk with at the federal level, at the state level, the lack of trust related to Hanford is incredibly high. They do not believe that you, by changing the definition, you are somehow making anybody safe, either the workers or the community or the rest of the, the rest of the Northwest. So as you talk with your staff or your, your supervisors or whomever, let them know that they have a, there's a, a basic lack of trust um, that, that you are going to struggle with, with no matter where you are in the Northwest, quite frankly. They do not believe that you're in, actually your intent is to clean up the site or to make things safe. Your intent is to be as cheap as possible. Well, that's how they. That's how it's viewed. That you are, your intent is to be as cheap as possible and not get things done. And they are not necessarily saying you individually. 
So be careful about that. It's not, it's not an attempt to, to really attack personal folks. It's an attempt to say, we do not trust the institutions that have put these things in, in place. And that they continue to change the definitions and the strategies in a way that does not appear to be trustworthy. So as you take whatever notes you're taking back to places, let them know that that's the biggest issue that I keep running into is the trust. Now I can go through the scientific stuff as well. Uh, my other background is molecular biology, so I have at least some sense of that. And I did cover Hanford for uh, 14 or 15 of my 17 years as a television reporter. So, uh, and I was there to, uh, often enough that I knew all of the folks who worked at the Red Line Richly. Uh, so uh, it is important for you to, to understand again and that you have um, a, a serious problem in terms of trust. And I was just at uh, Savannah River um, in, uh, in July, I did a tour there, interesting tour. It is, um, it, it does not translate in terms of the lack of trust that you had in the Northwest. Um, and that's for the way that Hanford's been handled, it's whoops, which is still on the, on the minds of some of us who are old enough to remember whoops. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's all of those things. That's a and I just encourage you, as you write down your notes, as you take this back to the, uh, the, the leaders of your, of your departments, that they understand they have a major trust factor. Thank you. Thanks, well, they two legislators in a row. Um, State Representative Jerry Paulette from the Washington side of the river and Director of Heart of America Northwest uh, Regional Hanford Cleanup Watchdog Group. I want to thank the State of Oregon and the Oregon Department of Energy for a terrific process and collaboration putting this together this evening and for all the partners in having a very informative dialogue. Um, I do want to make it very clear that this is not a public hearing, that the states of Oregon and Washington and our senators and others have asked for public hearings and we've been deprived of that opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yes. And mm -hmm. that is just symbolic of the lack of trust that has been discussed here tonight. That the Energy Department is holding a public comment period before any of the key documents are available. Mm -hmm. Seeing some writing on the wall, they have issued a formal notice in the Federal Register to weaken the criteria against which they would be judged under their current process. And is apparently afraid of having those of you from the Department of Energy sit in front of a room and respond to at a public hearing, especially in the state of Washington. Um, and it's very unfortunate, and we hope that, we don't just hope, we expect that you will be extending the comment period for after all the decision-making documents are out and available for review, and then hold public hearings. I want to address for a minute gentlemen who raised worker health and safety. Um, there are other people well qualified to talk about this here, including Tom. Uh, the Energy Department has literally murdered workers by refusing for years to monitor the vapor emissions mm -hmm. and include engineered controls. These are people I know personally who are dying. It's um, any other industry with hazardous waste tanks that have vented into the atmosphere would have been charged with crimes for exposing hundreds of people. In Washington State, we just changed our state law after years of the Energy Department refusing to provide workers' compensation for these victims of vapor exposure, 
and beryllium exposure, fighting tooth and nail against doing the right thing that would happen in any other industry. And the question is why? Part of it is save money, part of it is save face, and refuse to acknowledge what their own experts panel said year after year, that the vapor exposures were killing people. And now they've settled a lawsuit that says in three years we'll test one technology at one tank, three different tanks. That's not an answer yet. Um, we can remove waste safely. It involves installing air emission monitoring and vapor controls. There's nothing radical about this. It is literally off the shelf technology. But the energy department isn't doing it. And it can be done safely and should be done safely. And that brings us to the question of whether or not the Department of Energy and the Department of Ecology have abandoned their commitments made in the for the tank closure waste management environmental impact statement record of decision. Many of you were out at the public hearing.